Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you my monthly animal portrait. I plan on doing one each month in the year of 2019. And this is for February. So I'm starting out my art journal page. It's going to be an art journal page this time. Last month it was a canvas. Um, this art journal is one that I'm, it's the first one I ever made. I think the first one I ever made and it's been all around the world. It was part of a art journal collaboration swap where you get a journal each month and you send it to the next person in line and they do a page and then the next person does a page and the next person does a page. And so this, this journal has a lot of other people's art in it. Um, that is interesting and one of the pages well there's two pages from someone from Australia that participated in this particular thing a few years ago and she drew some really um, interesting type of I think it's I think it's fauna <laughs> I don't I'm not sure but anyway it's some sort of thing called a banksia that she drew and then also there's a, a little postcard of what she called non-lethal um, Australian uh, creatures or whatever and then she did another page with a beautiful poem anyway I that's one of the very first pages in the book and so I was um, looking at that and I thought you know what I'm going to make a animal today that's from Australia I've never been to Australia and I've seen this animal but only in a zoo <laughs> so <laughs> If I didn't do it justice, I'm sorry. I did use a reference reference photo from Unsplash. Unsplash is a site where you can use the photos that uh, random people post on there um, as inspiration or as part of your art. They're they're not copyrighted, so you can use them. And I will put the um, the link to the photo that I used from Unsplash in the description box below with the credit to the photographer so that uh, you can see it. I I used it for a reference for the uh, animal. I didn't use, um, it, there's more than one animal in the picture. I only used one and well, technically two, I guess. <laughs> but there was a whole bunch of them in the picture. Uh, so it's really not like a replication of the photo, but it is an inspiration in that it had a field with some animals in it. It had uh, a tree line or something in the background in the distance and a sky in the distance. So I'm building that sort of a uh, landscape using some gel prints. And these are leftover scraps of gel prints that are from uh, Thursday the the 14th is when we printed them. It was It's from Art Joy Sharing, which is my other channel where we where Peg and I do live streams we gel printed then the next week we made things with the gel prints but there's still gel print left there's lots of it still left I mean there's I didn't use it all up on my paper painting so these are pieces that are still out because I haven't put them away I put them away now but before when I started this I hadn't put them away so they're the same ones that I used the other day and I just kind of put them Put them down with some Liquitex matte gel medium. I'm trying to trim the edges, but it's still too wet. Uh, you should wait <laughs> to, to trim until all that uh, Liquitex matte gel medium is dry. I never do. I'm so impatient. Um, I do have some small sharp scissors that have Teflon coating, so they're pretty easy to clean the glue off of, so I don't worry too much about that. <clears throat> so then uh, the sky... And some of it just seemed too bright for the reference photo, which uh, was not bright. Um, the sky was almost white in the picture. So I wanted to tone down that sky. So I did that with the white gesso. And then while I was at it, I kind of just toned everything down a little bit because now the sky seemed like it had gesso on it and then everything else didn't. And I thought I should put it all the way across. Then I just used my finger to tone it down even more with some titanium white paint and my finger kind of make cloudy looks so that that blue wasn't so bright in comparison to the other colors. It was a pretty dull colored photograph. 
because I don't know, I guess maybe it's summer or something and everything's kind of dry. So then I'm going to use a 4B graphite pencil to make my sketch. And this is where I'm looking at the photo, trying to, uh, trying to draw it correctly. It, this is a, a different type of animal than I'm used to. It's got kind of a thick neck, but it's got these short little arms, kind of like a Trionosaurus Rex. <laughs> My arms, they're so short, I can't reach anything. <laughs> and then it's got a fairly, fairly large body and a long tail. So I bet you're figuring out now what it is. You know it's from Australia. You know it's, it's uh, I just described it. Also, this one is a girl and it has a baby. And the most interesting thing about this animal to me is that it carries its babies in its pouch in like a little tummy sack. Just carries them around. And eventually they get out, I suppose. I'm not sure. I didn't I didn't do any research, so I'm not sure how long they stay in the pouch or if they can get out and get back in. I'm sure some of my Australian viewers will give us pointers in the comments below about this very unique and interesting animal. I used to have uh, stuffed characters uh, that were made by a friend of my mom's when I was a child from the Winnie the Pooh series. And I loved Winnie the Pooh when I was a kid. And <clears throat> I had a Pooh and I had a Piglet and I had a Tigger and I had Rabbit. I also had Kanga and Roo. And Kanga and Roo were two separate uh, stuffed dolls, but the Roo could fit in the pouch of the Kanga which is pretty impressive. <laughs> My mom's friend um, that she played Pinnacle with sewed them, I believe. That, at least that's my recollection. But she was a, a good, a, she could sew really well. Um, I don't think that I could pull off sewing that. I, I can sew a little bit, but certainly not enough to be able to do something as intricate as that. But they were fun. I... I really loved them. I didn't play with them that much. They were more just kind of ones that sat around, but I really liked them because I liked Winnie the Pooh. And then I liked Winnie the Pooh even more when my kid was little and we used to watch it as videos and things. And I had some things from the Disney store that had Tigger and, and Eeyore. Oh, I had Eeyore too. Eeyore is my favorite. Thanks for noticing me. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, I really like Eeyore. But anyway, had the whole set. So after I drew Kanga and Roo here, I then went back and put some white gesso over them to uh, white out the background and prepare them for painting. And I decided to use acrylic paint. So I've got collage, then I've got uh, sketching illustration then I've got acrylic paint so this is definitely mixed media we're mixing up all the medias here you know like you do that's the fun thing I'm not a pro acrylic painter but I have these this big set well I have a ton of acrylic paint I use it for all kinds of things gel printing whatever but just specifically do a acrylic painting I would not say that I'm the best at that but um, I have this set from Arteza and I thought, you know, I need several different colors of blues and, I mean, blues, browns and, and, uh, tans and some, you know, warmer colors, cooler colors. So I got out this Arteza set of 24 colors and I, I put some on my palette. I've got, uh, raw umber. I've got raw sienna. I've got burnt sienna. Um, this, there's still some white gesso, but I also got out some titanium white and some carbon black. I think that's the all the colors. There's a, a medium brown, a dark brown, a golden color, and a white and a black. Yeah, so I'm just mixing them on my palette as I go and also mixing them. Um, acrylic doesn't dry instantly, so you can mix it a little bit on the actual painting. Of course, the texture of this is really rough and uh, bumpy and 
and a little bit creased because of the collage in the background. The, I, the reason I collaged it in the background is because this particular book, I made it out of different types of paper. And on this particular two page spread, one side is a like a 90 pound, a lighter weight watercolor paper that's very rough. And the other side was manila cardstock. I, I used some manila folders. And I, I mean, this is like one of my very first journals I ever made. I think it's the first journal I ever made. And um, I don't know. I, did, I guess I didn't know. There's some mixed media paper in here. You know, that stuff that they call mixed media paper that doesn't hold up to actual mixed media. Um, there's, I had some manila folders that were left over from a job. And I used those. I cut them up. I had this pad of, of low quality watercolor paper that I cut up and I just put all that paper in there. I just mixed up it, it all up in the signatures. And so um, when you're doing two pages, you can get two different kinds of paper. So that's the reason that I started with the collage. Also doing collage on a background gives you instant color and pattern and form because there it is. It's already there, right? <laughs> so it's a good way to start a page if you don't know where you're starting. And yeah, that worked out good. I've got my, my kind of brown grass. I've got my trees and mountain type thing. I've got my sky already there from the collage. So I'm using a small brush, um, a small inexpensive brush to kind of mix my paints and add them uh, looking at the photograph on my iPad to kind of get an idea of where the shadows and the highlights and the colors are. Uh, the animal's furry and I didn't really make, I didn't like try to intentionally make a furry look. I'm just doing color and uh, shading and highlight with the paints. I would have to get a really small brush and like try to make little tiny lines. And I wasn't into that. This is an art journal page in a journal that I'm trying to finish. I don't want to take, you know, 50,000 years to try to paint this. It's just uh, a quick thing. This uh, page took me one hour, 21 minutes. That gives you an idea, you know, sped up to, tw to a little bit under 20 minutes long for the whole video. So it wasn't a gargantuan effort <laughs> to do this. It was an art journal page. That's if I, t I usually take around an, an hour or something, an hour 30 to do an art journal page, no matter what kind of, of process it is. So that's about the amount of time that I'm willing to spend on an art journal page. It's just, it's in a book. No one's ever going to see it. It's just, you know, I might take it out sometime and look at it. This one has two, this is the last two page spread in this book. And then it has two one page, you know, small little pages left. And then this one will be complete and it will be the second or third journal I've ever completed, a completely complete. <laughs> so, you know, you have a journal, you're working in it, then you get a new journal and you start working in that one. And then someone gives you another one, you start working in that one, and then you get another one. And pretty soon you've got like, you know, 10 different books in process and you never finish any of them. And that's definitely where I'm at. I have a ton of other ones that have not been finished that I've had for years that are still, still have pages in them. So I would like to finish those books and that's, I'm all, this one's almost done. So I'm excited. <laughs> it's almost done. It has a lot of other people's art in it, plus a lot of mine too, because I, I guess I wasn't thinking 12 months, 12 two, two page spreads. I was just thinking I'm going to make a journal and I'm going to mail it. And that's what I did. So then once I was uh, fairly happy with my little acrylic painting on my Kanga and Rue, I got out some Neo Color to Water Soluble Crayons. These are one of my favorite things in the world. I love them. I heart them. They are made by Cran de Ash uh, somewhere over in Europe. So they are an imported product, but they're so blendy and creamy and smooth and highly pigmented. They're very nice. Uh, they, they might be called water solu soluble pastels. That might be what 
people think they are, but to me they're crayons. They look like crayons, they color like crayons, so they're water-soluble crayons. <laughs> and I could wax poetic about how much I love them. Um, yeah, they're blendable. So I scribble them on and then I get a wet brush and I blend them. In, I'm just trying to like add some texture to the foreground. There was some little bushes and things in the picture, like scrubby something on the ground that was just kind of a greenish color. And I added some uh, ochre color and some brown and I'm just blending all that with a wet brush. And then I get out a charcoal pencil at some point must be coming up soon because this looks like it's about done. Yeah, here's a charcoal. So then I go around and fill in the details again with a charcoal pencil, which is, you know, dark. It's uh, black. It's burnt charcoal. And I blend that with a paper blending stump, uh, sometimes called a tortillion, which makes me laugh because it's so close to something that I eat frequently, which is a tortilla. <laughs> so I always want to call it a tortilla when I see the word. Tortillion, tortilla sounds the same. So um, this just gives some detail back into the painting and the, that I'm doing it in the background, going around some of those little tree forms that I did in the background, the hill forms and things like that, making sure that my horizon line is there. The horizon line's slightly high. I wish it would have been just a little bit lower. But you know your one-third, two-thirds rule. It's a little bit more than a third. It's more like a half. But you get the idea. We got half, then we got quarter and quarter in this one. <laughs> if you really want to get technical. So here I am blending it with the paper stump or the tortilla. Um, no, I did not get a tortilla out of the refrigerator and blend it. <laughs> And um, then I think I use my white Posca pen to add back in some uh, white highlights, very bright white highlights, which I enjoy in my uh, pages and paintings and things. I like to have bright white highlights. So I usually do that with my white fine Una Posca pen, which is an acrylic paint pen. And then I think it's pretty much done. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is the second in the series of animal portraits. I will link the other one that I did last month um, in the iCard and I will, uh, I don't know, I'll put some links in for you guys. And I will link how this journal was constructed out of a cereal box. I'll link that video. I don't know what else I'll link, but there'll be links in the end card and links in the I cards above. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already, because that's always exciting. And turn on your notification bells. And of course, you can share this or pin it if you want to, because that all those things really help out my channel and help, it, help people find me. So I'm always appreciative when you do that. And I have a very, very supportive community here on YouTube that does that for me. So thank you very, very much. And that is it for me. Bye-bye.